Our poor feline friend isn't going to get paid now that those dead collectors showed up and dragged her boss away. If a certain someone hadn't told the thugs how to get to the Nokane building, they probably wouldn't have caught Yanagashita. The right decision happens at 11.15, but who has to make it? Mm, I'm assuming one of the two characters. Jesus Christ, so creepy. Let's try this guy. Minorikawa. Did he try to punch me? What just happened, dude? This game is 90% bad ends. When they say they have 50 different endings, it's all bad ends, dude. Except one. The Super Club 90 raced down the Route 246 towards Shibuya. The speed speedometer remained at the steady 60 kil per hour. Pumping the gas harder has was no use. This was as fast as the bike would go. Minoru Minorikawa shouted as he sped along. Damn it! I'm not letting you die! He jerked the handlebars and blew past the truck on the inside. The driver scowled at him as he shot by. You maniac! You're trying to get yourself killed! Just the opposite! Minorikawa shouted back. I'm saving lives! The, sh the stoplight had turned red, cutting him off at the intersection. Oh, come on! We had He had no choice but to slam on the brakes, but his agitation boiled over as he waited for the signal to change again. How long is this thing gonna stay red? Hurry up already! He brought the bike right up to the very edge of the front line, keeping the engine revved like a dragster ready, drag, dragster ready to peel out. Not on time, it's not in my dictionary. The light turned red. Then Minorikara owned right own light turned green at the last he hit the accelerator as hard as he could his engine died with a splatter spotter huh oh come on what the hell car horns blared angrily behind him in a fury he pulled his bike over to the side of the road Well, his bike is a goner. No matter what he did, the engine refused to turn over. Was the problem with the spark plug or maybe the battery? Whatever it was, he didn't have time to figure it out now. With tears in his eyes, he left the bike, his companion of 10 years, abandoned on the roadside. Oh my god. He was about to break into a run when he saw a taxi dead ahead letting out a passenger. He hurried to hop, on, hop into the cab. That's a cab driver? King Kong Company? Just head for Shibuya Station. I'll let you know exactly where once we get closer. The taxi driver nodded coolly. <laughs> coolly? Of course, sir. 10 minutes! Huh? I need you to get me there in 10 minutes! The driver grimaced. I'm afraid getting there in 10 minutes is a bit... 15 then! Sir, that's still... Look, that's all the time I can afford. Assuming traffic condition cooperates, sir, then maybe. I can't make any promises. Minorikara looked at the driver's ID photo above the fr uh, fare meter. His name was Hachiro Kimizuka. He was a middle-aged middle fellow, looked a little rough around the edges. Mr. Kimizuka, I choose you for this! You can do it. Choose me. Sir, I'm pretty certain we met by chance. Okay, sure, I suppose you could phrase it that way. Anyhow, can we get along? Can we get going? Right, Kimizuka said with a faint sigh, I will see what I can do. The taxi pulled away at a decent clip. I mean, isn't that a really, like, like, you should never do that to taxi driver? Minorikawa's frantic journey had started 20 minutes earlier. He'd been at home working on interview pieces. 
He clocked his tongue in annoyance as the ringing phone broke his train of thoughts. Why did someone always call right when the words were flowing? If he didn't keep getting interrupted, he probably could wrap this piece up in no time. Be quiet! He pointed at the telephone as he yelled. You tell telephone to shut up? Why not just pick up the phone? Or just hang up the phone, dude? I'm writing here! But his shouting did nothing to silence the ringing. Yeah, dude. He didn't have much choice but to pick up. Who wrote this story? It's so bad. Minorikawa speaking. There was no response. Hello? He hesitated, ready to hang up. Was this a prank call? It's me. It's to Toyama. It was Teruo Toyama, the president of Heaven Publishing. Oh, uh, what do you want? If this is about work, I'm already booked pretty full. He was taking work from Heaven Publishing on several occasions, but the pay was hardly competitive. Lately, he had been turning them down a lot, so he hadn't heard from Toyama in a while. No, this isn't work-related. Then what do you want? I'm kind of pressed for time here, working on some copy. Minorikawa was in no mood to beat around the bushes. It seems like every conversation had had he had with Toyama went like this. Ah, you're busy. That's good. Busy is good when you're a freelancer. Toyama sounded unusually sympathetic. Minorikawa found it off-putting. I hear sales have been good on your end, he said cautiously. With this month's four-star general gossip and all. Four-star general gossip was a monthly magazine, Heaven Publishing's flagship publication. It had a small circulation and for the most part flew under the radar, but once in a while they would land some big scoop and sell like crazy. This month's education had... Uh, edition. This month's edition had some... had come with a free scratch card, a gimmick that had moved 100,000 copies with ease. Five winning symbols in a row wins 100,000 yen, was it? Minorikawa asked. A weak, moist sound come from the come through the receiver hmm baffles me like how i listen more closely it came out again then again it kind of sounded like sobbing mr toyama are you are you are you crying there was another soft sob and then yet another what's going on where are you minorikawa asked at the office toyama managed he let out he let out another mewling whimper what's the matter it's nothing. Well, it's gotta be something. Come on, what is it? Toyama gave no reply. Mr. Toyama, you still there? Silence. What is it? What happened? <laughs> Look, <laughs> it's gonna tell me anything. So what the hell's going on? Toyama squeaked out a drawn out whine. Okay, I'm sick of this. I'm hanging up now. Minorikawa was about to break the connection when he heard Toyama murmur. Oh wait, that was him saying that. The only thing I can do now is die. The taxi lurched to a sudden stop as the driver slammed on the brakes. <laughs> Minorikawa pitched forward, his face smacking against the back of the seat in front of him. Kimizuka struck his head out of the window. Careful, buddy! Careful, buddy! He shouted at someone in the street ahead. You're gonna get yourself killed! Minorikawa blinked the stars from his eyes and saw men moving alongside the cab. The guy grabbed onto the handle of the back door. Please, I need you! I need you to let me in this cab! No way, Minorikawa snapped. Just who did this guy think it was? Please, I'm begging you here. Look, I'm in a hurry, pal. Get your own cab. I know how ridiculous this must sound, but please, this is really, really urgent. Urgent? Yes, it's a matter of life or death. Please. The guy did look pretty desperate. Look, I'm sorry, but I'm dealing with something urgent here too. Then let me ride with you. I will pay for the whole fare. My entire future is on the line here. The guy sure was persistent. Maybe he was telling the truth. But Minorikawa had problems on his own. Sorry, buddy. It's life or death on my end too. I gotta look after me and mine. Right. 
so sorry to trouble you. Finally, the guy gave up and shuffled away. Guess it couldn't have been that much of a life-ending crisis after all. Minorikawa checked his wristwatch. Damn it! That just cost us five minutes. I'll try to make it up, sir. The driver called back. The taxi lurched into motion. The engine quickly revving up to the speed. Probably the bad end, right? Once inside the building, he avoided the elevator in favor of rushing up the stairs. Heaven Publishing rented out the third and fourth floors. In all likelihood, Toyama would be at the editing department of Four Star General Gossip on the fourth floor. When he got there, however, the door was locked. Mr. Toyama! Hey, Mr. Toyama! He shouted and banged, but there was no reply. Something was seriously wrong. Minorikawa took a deep breath and then kicked the door in. Whoa! The sight he stepped into the building filled with him with the horror. I mean, the dude died, I guess. Minorikawa clutched the side of his head. I'm too late. <laughs> oh no. If only I would gotten here a little sooner. Just five minutes. Hmm. Minorikawa rushed to Heaven Publishing as fast as he could, but he didn't get in get there in time to save Toyama. And said to say it was really all Kano's fault. Why does Kano want the taxi so badly? Check his 11 10 time stamp and the situation might become clean clearer. So I guess we would need to go to Kano now. I can't do anything. So now we go to Kano. Or do we go Osawa? Alright, let's just go Kano, dude. As he wandered through the back alleys, Kano gritted his teeth. Going after the guy on the bike had been a bad judgment call. By the time he got back onto the pedestrian overpass, the man who had thrown the attaché case was almost out of sight. Kano prided himself on being fleet of foot, but he knew even he could never catch the guy before he disappeared. He would follow the culprit as far as the alley, but there he would lost him completely. All he could do now was to hope one of his colleagues caught the man on the motorcycle. Kuzu's voice crackled through the earpiece. Mobile command center calling all units. The suspect on the motorcycle has handed off the case to an accomplice in Miyashita Park. Another foreigner. <laughs> Dude, come on, man. All that foreigners working together in Japan. You can't let those sneaky deaky foreigners in Japan. For real? Kind of muttered. One thing immediately struck him as strange. Why hand the case off to someone else at all? Why not just escape on the bike? The man with the motorcycle dumped the bike and fled on the foot. We would retrieve the bike and run the plate, and we would determine that it was a stolen vehicle. We still don't have enough detail to positively ID the suspect. The suspect now carrying the attache case is heading through Dogenzaka, also on foot. We've got it under the observation. Dogenzaka, huh? That wasn't too far from where Kano was now. It looks like we're dealing with a foreign crime syndicate that's familiar with Shibuya. All unit, head to Dogenzaka. But do not, I repeat, do not attempt to approach, apprehend the suspect with the case. Let's see where it goes. Kano nodded to himself. Without knowing more about the crooks of M.O., letting this guy go for now was probably the only right call. I just want you to all know one last thing. Kuzu's tone grew more solemn. Whatever happens, I know I can count on each and every one of you. Don't disappoint me. Over and out. Kano had the unsettling feeling that the message had been meant for him. Right, it's now or never. The sudden appearance of this syndicate and its bizarre action were rapidly moving through, moving things beyond the jurisdiction of both the MPD and the local police. Mustering his resolve, Kano headed for Dogenzaka. That spooked me. Kano pulled his cell phone out of his pocket. It was Rumi calling. 
She knew full well he wasn't supposed to take private calls while he was working a case. Maybe it was an emergency? He decided to pick it up. Rumi, I'm sorry. Are you in the middle of something right now? Um, kind of. Is this an emergency? Um, well, yeah. So, I'm in Shibuya right now and... Shibuya? Why does she have to be in Shibuya now of all times? So, um, my father came down from Nagano all of a sudden. What? Rumi's father, Shizuo, had been staunchly opposed to the two of them getting married. Kano had visited his home many times, but the man had never even uh, denied to meet him. Yeah, he told me to tell you he wants to meet you. What? Now? Kano blurted the words out with more alarm than he would intended. I told him you were busy working, but he said he would wait. This can't be happening. Kano whimpered to himself. I'm sorry, I know he can be demanding. That's not the issue. Her dad offering to wait made it harder for him to refuse. Alright, I kind of said. But I'll have to call you back later, okay? I I really am sorry. I'll be at the cafe called La, La Trek. It's by the train station. Rumi hung up. For a long moment, Kano stood in the daze, staring at his phone. As if keeping up with the case wasn't stressful enough. Why can't he not just go there, meet the dead real quick, and then come back to the case? It's not like... What is there for him to follow? The license plate of the bike was stolen. He doesn't know where the other foreigner is. Like, what is he gonna do right now anyways, right? At last, he stumbled into motion. But even as he sc scored Dogenzaka for any sign of the criminal... He, his mind remained fixed on the meeting with Rumi's dad. There was no way of knowing when he would be done with this case for case work today. But could he really pass up on the once in a lifetime opportunity to get her father's approval for her hand in marriage? Maybe he could slip away for just a bit. There were plenty of detectives still tailing the suspect. Taking 15 minutes or so to meet with Shizuo wouldn't be such a big deal, would it? Hmm, what do you think, Chad? I will choose the option that you, you want me to choose. Ooh, stretch. Man, I've been, I've been reading. Been reading like three hours straight. Alright, let's go A. This is my big chance I should go meet with Rumi and Shizu while I can. It's now or never, Kano decided. His future happy happiness depends on winning over Shizu. He might not have the opportunity later if the kidnapping case wound up going south. He would just have to make sure he didn't linger too long. He was trying to decide the best way to save as much time as possible when he caught sight of a taxi passing by. Uh oh. He stepped out into the street to flag the cap down. The station wasn't too far away, but it would be faster to take a car than run there. Uh-oh. That's the cab. That's the cab, boys! We just killed a dude! Well... I guess we'll, we'll go back to it and choose B. I mean, I already read this dialogue just now, so I don't really want to read it now. Bad end. The taxi s sped away. Kano scanned the area looking for another cab. Instead, he spotted the man with the attache case. It was stroke of dumb luck, but Kano wasn't going to lose sight of him now. He decided to follow. Further up along Dogenzaka, in the direction the, the perp was heading was where Yamete <laughs> Yamete Dory <laughs> joined Route 246. Maybe the guy was planning to meet up with the get getaway car? No, wait, hold on. If that were the plan, why would the gang have to ditch the motorcycle earlier? 
kind of started trailing the man, wrecking his brain all the while. The suspect turned down a narrow side road. He hasn't heading down Yamate, <laughs> Yamate, <laughs> Yamate, Yamate, <laughs> Yamate Dori or Route 246 at all, but back towards Shibuya Station. What in the world was going on? It was starting to feel like the crooks were just messing with the investigation team. Kind of radioed Kuze on the wireless. Sir, I don't think there's any point in seeing where this guy leads us anymore. That's not your call to make. Keep watching him. Sir, this is a waste of time. That girl might be in danger if... Kano argument was cut short as he saw the man handing off the attache case to yet another foreigner. Again? How many times were these criminals going to pull this trick? The detectives broke into two groups to follow both of the men. Dean and Dan do it better? What kind of t-shirt is that? Kano followed the man with the attache case who eventually led him back to the area around Shibuya Station. Rumi and Shizuo should be waiting at nearby cafe right now. Cannot try to remember the name. That's right, it was called Lautrec. He kept his eyes out for a place by that name as he tailed the target. Before long, he did spot the cafe. Its large plate glass window offered a view of the cozy interior. The sign out of front says Lotoreku. Looks uh, looked like this was the place. The man with the case was at the intersection waiting for the light to change. Kano took the opportunity to peer inside. He spotted Rumi right away. She was facing away from him. So the man seated across from her must be her father. Kano realized he would never see a picture of him. She's a grew organic produce up in Nagano nowadays, but until two years ago, he would be a detective with the investigation division. Rumi looked up to her father for his disguised police career and always spoke quite highly of him. Kano had figured that if he becomes a policeman, Rumi might approach appreciate that. It was a simple impulse that had led to him to join the force. He had also figured that the public servants could stay afloat even in times of recession and that his physical training would serve him well in such a line of work. Once he was a policeman, he would thought he could approach Shizuo with his head held high and ask for his blessing in marrying his daughter. But after Rumi graduated from university, Shizuo had up and retired from police work. Even Rumi didn't know why he would make the decision. Kano had traveled up to Nagano many times to ask Shizuo for permission to marry her. But the only response he got was, I'm not giving away my daughter to any cop. Kano had never even gone past the intercom before her father turned him away. Years on the force had nearly made Kano lose sight of what had driven him to become a policeman in the first place. And now, the chance to meet Shizuo face to face had finally come. He peered intensely into the cafe. Across from Rumi sat the old man, sat an old man with a grim expression. <laughs> Just who was this hard-faced fellow? It took a lot to rattle Kano, but the guy looked scary. Could this really be his sweet little Rumi's father? The prospect of meeting him, meeting with him later filled Kano with sudden dread. <laughs> hey. The men went into the JR Shibuya station and stood there, stood before the ticket machine. It looked like he was planning on boarding a train. A scene from a popular movie about a kidnapping sprang into Kano's mind, where the crook had made off with the ransom money after it was tossed out the window of a train. What if this guy managed to get outside the uh, dragnet and pull a stunt like that? It looks, it looks like the suspect is going to board a train. Kano informed Kuzu over the wireless. Make sure you stay on his tail. Apparently, Kuzu still wanted to string the pr uh, perp along for a bit. We've got the lizards ready to pursue. Well, okay, what is lizards? Japanese police lingo for motorcycle squads deployed to pursue suspects in urban settings. See, that's actually pretty, pretty helpful. We'll reestablish our dragnet around whatever station he goes on. He gets off that. The man purchased a ticket from the machine and passed through the gate. There was no way to tell what station he would brought a ticket. F he bought ticket for, 
but it looked like he was heading clockwise along the Yama Yamamo ye Yam Yamanote line loop. Kano used his prepaid card and machine made his way through the ticket gate as well. An announcement chimed chime signaled the immediate immediate arrival of a train up on the platform. The man made his way up the stairs looking calm, composed. He showed up no sign of checking for pursuers. Kano hurried after him. The men stood at the very edge of the platform to wait the train. Not ideal. There was no way for Kano to get close without sticking out like a sore thumb. The train glided up to the platform. The man gave a quick look around as he stepped aboard. Kano followed. Train on the Yamamote line didn't stop for long and soon they were on their way. Glancing around, Kano noticed other MPD investigator who had slipped aboard the train as well. The suspect stood behind the driver's compartments, sta uh, staring contemplatively at the scenery outside. The man's composure only served to rattle Kano more. A man in godly necktie walked past Kano, talking on his cell phone. Yes, everything's going to be fine on this end, he said. There's no need to worry. In his other hand, he's carried same sort of attache case as the men they were tra tailing. He headed right towards the driver's compartment and stood next to the suspect. Well, now that's not suspicious. <laughs> Kano leaned his head subtly, sub subtly, uh, straining to make out what he could of the p phone conversation at the other end of the car. Yes, of course. 225 pages, all fully proofread. 225 with 200 um it's a panel code of japan details kidnapping for profit and kidnapping for ransom according to 225 is police shorthand for kidnapping ah, that was police jargon for kidnapping was this guy in cahoots with the kidnapper maybe the criminals had planned an attaché case swap. Kano, atta uh, Kano watched the newcomer like a hawk. But rather than making contact with the suspect, the man turned around and strolled back the way he'd come. He hadn't done anything suspicious at all. Yes, right, right. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Understood. Kano stole a glimpse of the man's face as he passed. He stopped and looked at Kano, seemingly aware that he was being watched. Kano decided to... Oh no, wait, he, he already noticed us that we were looking at him, right? Should we not stare him down? Because if I just like, oh shit, and then like look away, it would be more, it would be more obvious, I think. Stare down, hi T. I think we should stare down, just because if we were to look away... I feel like it's in a way of admitting that um, we were looking at him. Hey, then say nice glasses, nerd. All right, stare him down. Kind of decided to stare him down. Ah, oh, my apologies, the man said. He shut his phone with a click. I know it's rather r rude to talk on one's cell phone when you're on a train. That's just common decency. decency. The man affected a smile, then headed back to the car where car from which he would come. Ah, uh, so I guess he thought we're giving him an eye because he was talking on his cell phone. Sheesh, guess I overreacted. You gotta stop staring at everyone. An oddly dressed passenger murmured into Kano's ear. Blend into your surroundings more. Sasayama? Where'd you get that here? When did you get here? His partner has somehow found time to change his disguise. The steerly expression on his face was at odds with his anime nerd getup. Kano had seen Sasayama disguise himself as plenty of things throughout the years. Chef, magician, samurai, and an astronaut to name a few, but this was a new extreme, even for him. 
When he first joined the force, Kano had found Sasayama costuming and Tiggs amusing, wondering where he man managed to find his outfits, but lately his quirk has become tedious. You like the ocean? Huh? Never mind. Sasayama pulled a small bottle from his breast pocket. Drink this while you can. Guessing you haven't eaten. Huh? What's this? The least I could do. He handed Kano the bottle, then slipped away into the next compartment. He would pull an all-nighter and hadn't eaten, so he was glad to have something. He took a sip. Whatever this was, it was bland. It was almost didn't taste like anything. Just what had Sasayama given him? Ah, uh, what the heck, anything's better than nothing. He brought the bottle to his lips and chugged the content down. He suddenly got a massive head rush. He felt the heat. A heat like a burning mess spread from his inside throughout his whole body. No, that wasn't right. It was an ache. It was a furious ache. A burning that spread from his inside to his fingerprints. And there was pain. A numbing that spread from inside all the way down to his toes. Burning, aching, hurting, burning, aching, hurting, burning, 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 burning. This was no good. This was super duper not good. He broke into a cold sweat. His forehead drenched, his body damped, and clammy all over. He felt... His grip on conscious slipping. Sasayama, what the hell did you give it to me? With blurry eyes, he squinted to read the writing on the bottle. B b b burn. After a scant few letters, kind of blacked out. Bad end. So I guess... Oh my god. Gosh, all these freaking things tangled. So I have to play as the mascot and give the drink to the other person and not him. And then uh, Kano would have never gotten the drink. And then I have to play as... Okay, so okay, I got it. I got it. So I go... I go back to mascot. 